Hi, in this video I will show you how to use the Platinum Cure Silicon and the Tin Cure Silicon for 3D printed resin parts. The Platinum Cure Silicon does not like the sulfur in the resin and that's why we try the Tin Cure Silicon and check how does it behave. If you have a Platinum Cure Silicon already at home, then you can use a varnish to seal your resin 3D print against the Platinum Cure Silicon. After I made the molds, I will use this urethane resin to cast the parts. It has a very fast setting time, which is ideal for small parts. At the end I will use the Wiener silicon to make a mold from this big root model and also cast it with the urethane resin. During this procedure I will give you 18 plus 1 tips to help you make a successful copy of your resin 3D printed model. Tip number one, hollow your model. For this task I use the free Prusa Slicer version 2.2. For resin prints you have to go to the printer settings and then choose the original Prusa SL1. If you don't have it in the list you can add it here. If you have this setup then you can import your STL file which is a solid model in this case and then with the press of the H key or clicking on this icon you can open the hollow and drill menu and then thick the hollow this object and set up the wall thickness. If you want to give an exact number then you can set up here and click on the preview button and after it's finished then you can check how does it look. This feature is available since the version 2.2 and now I save the model and then I reopen it. This is a bug in the software that you cannot really cut the bottom part if you not reopen it. So after we imported the hollowed part, then we can cut off three millimeters from the button and then we can get a shell of our model. And in this way you can save a lot of resin, which is cost effective. Now you just have to export it as an STL. This is my workaround here. If you have any better solution, then please write it in the comment section. Tip number two, auto orientation and support. The quickest and dirtiest way to make it, but the most of the time it works for me, to import your STL file and then right click on the model and choose the optimize orientation. After that, click on the SLA support points and then auto generates points. If it's finished, then you can check how does the result look. If you want to, you can manually edit the support and when you are satisfied with the results, you have to export the plate as STL including supports. In this way, you can import your supported STL file into your own 3D printer slicer, where you can slice it with your setups and then print it out. Tip number three, make your custom cup. For this task, I can recommend you to use Autodesk Fusion 360, which is a free software for private use. My workflow here was importing the STL5 first and then make a sketch around the base of the model. And after that, an other sketch through the axis of the model and then use the loft tool where I extruded this base profile through this path and then I gave it a minus five degree taper angle so it will be easier to take off the silicon after it's hardened. My last step was give a little bit extra volume to the cup with a single extrusion and then I just blend out the STL and the sketches and you can see how the cup looks. Now I just have to export it as an STL and then I will slice it in the next step. Tip number four, print in ways mode. After the model is imported in the slicer, in this case this simplifies 3D, then go to the edit process settings and then go to the layer tab and search for the ways mode, which is at the bottom here. If you don't use it, then I show you how it looks. You can see these green dots around the model and these are the retraction points. That's not good for us because it will leak the silicon or whatever you pure into. So I take it in and then I use some extra raft to make it stable 
and then slice it. After it finished you can see that there is one continuous line and no more retraction points. So we can save our model and then on the left hand side you can see the result of the waste mode enabled and the right hand side disabled version of the cup. A quick test shows us the problem where we can see that the water leaks out of this cup. From a closer look we can see clearly that the problem is the retraction point. After I pure it to the waste mode enabled version then we can check and see that there is no leakage at all around the whole model. If you want to print a watertight waste for yourself that's the way you go. This printing mode is also available in the Prusa slicer under the printer settings, layers and perimeters. You have the spiral waste mode, you have the thicket and then print like this. If you use Cura you can type the keyword spiral here and then click this option and you will get the same result. Tip number five, safety first. Yes, I know it looks like a little bit overkill, but better safe than sorry. For example, you can look here. I just mixed the custom resin and some droplets landed on my forearm. So long sleeves also required. And then it's time to print clean and cure. Tip number six, spray coating. If you have a resin 3D printer, you probably have also a UV resistant varnish at home. I have these two, but the water-based one at the left hand side is doesn't work for me to protect the sulfur gifting in the resin print against the platinum cure silicon. So I will use this white one, which is normally for paintings. First, give it a good shake and then Apply a thin coat for the whole surface, don't miss any spot because then it can cause a problem later. If you spray more then you are more on the safe side regarding the silicon curing, but you can lose details if you make it too much. Tip number seven, measure volume. Silicon is relatively expensive, that's why I designed this cap and also using now this volume measurement to estimate the minimum amount of silicon that I will need for this project. You can immerse your model into the water and then you will see the level and you can measure how much silicon you will need at the end. The silicons are mostly one to one mixing ratio by volume, so a big amount of silicon can be easily measured by this mixing cup which is mostly used for paint. But if you use smaller models, like the samples that I made, that is not so easy to measure the volume and you can make a bigger error during the mixing. That's why I recommend you the next. Tip number eight, calculate weight. If I work with small parts, I prefer to use my scale and then I need to know how many grams do I need from A and B. The problem with them is that it's not the same always like here by Moldstar, but for example by Omo, 25 you need 100 part A and 130 part B. So to calculate it how many grams that it means on the scale I made this mix ratio calculator and then you have to fill out first this blue part. You can find the data in the data sheet for it, for example, here is the specific gravity and if you have uh, another unit, you can change also the unit here. The next step is to find the volume of your model and your mold box. You can find this uh, information from your slicer, for example. If you click on the expert mode for the cap, uh, you can see the volume is uh, here with cubic millimeters and then for the model, you can also find the same data, I type it here in, and then this is also in cubic millimeters. Then you can give an extra material percentage here. Uh, this is because of the 
material can stick on the mixing stick and on the cup so after if you give it you can get the required a amount and required b amount material in grams if you start to measure in your cap and you add a little bit more from for example the a part you can get the required b with the same ratio with the same for b part if you make then the casting the casting is the same principle i use here the smoothcast 300 and q and you can find the data also here for it the model volume is the same as before and then you can calculate everything precisely and quickly tip number nine premix the silicon well it stays on the box also and it's a little bit tricky because if you open it and then just uh, take a glance it looks really smooth and uh, homogeneous but if you scrap the bottom of the silicon you will find some solid parts which accumulates on the bottom of the jar and then you have to scrap it off from the button and mix with the silicon well. If you take a closer look, then you can see that this is some kind of white material. I have no idea what could it be. So if you know, please write me into the comment section and let me know. Just to be sure, I mix both components around five minutes long. Tip number 10, for small parts use a scale. For this task I use the Chivalry scale, which is perfect for this purpose. It has a capacity of 500 grams and a graduation of 0.01 gram. You can find its link in the description. Tip number 11. Thoroughly mix the components. After you measure the A and the B components, you have to mix it together. The different color of the components helps you to find out when do you reach the homogeneous mixture. So if you see anywhere a different color tone of your mixture, then you have to keep going and then mix the corners, the wall, and after a while you will reach the homogeneous color and then after it you can pure it into your molding cup. Take care about the pot time of your silicon. Don't mix it too long because then it can set and then you lose all your material. Tip number 12, eliminate air bubbles. So after you mix your silicon, you can degas it with a vacuum chamber. If you don't have it, I don't have it. You can pure it from a higher level with a thin flow. And then like this, the air bubbles will pop out during this process. Air bubbles can trap between your model and your silicon. So if you want to reach the best result, you can use a brush and then brush the silicon into every little corners and details and so you will get a really good result at the end. I didn't make it here because I just use it for a sample. Tip number 13, weigh down your model. So if I just use the hollowed model to save resin, we have to put some weight inside. I use here some nuts and then you can reach the density around the silicon one. So during the curing time, it won't float to the surface. It's time to compare the samples. So the Mold Star 15 Slow has a curing time of four hours. I left it cure overnight, so well above the four hours. And you can see that the, the surface is still tacky and it's not cured at all. If we check the outside, it is the same. In this form you cannot use this silicon because if you just take off the model and wait a little bit it can be that it's curing with time but even in this case the uncured silicon will flow downwards and then you will lose the details of your model. With the second sample with the same platinum cured silicon the inside looks the same because we didn't coat it but the outside it's not tacky at all so you can take off the model and then use this silicon for casting. We can jump to the third sample which is an OMO 25 tincture silicon and you can see that it's set and not tacky at all. Definitely a winner. 
Tip number 14. Zigzag cut. So I use the tincture silicone for my big model and then you have to take off somehow the model from your mold. And now I just show you how to cut the mold first with some zigzag movements so you can seal it better for the casting process. If you want to make more molds from the same model you have to take care to not scratch or destroy your model inside the mold. When you reach the big enough opening then you can take off your model from the silicon mold. I prefer this version against the two part silicon mold because it's simpler and quicker to do because you don't have to wait two times the curing time. When you close back the mold the seam is invisible. And now it's time for casting. Tip number 15. Clean and close the lid quickly. The Smoothcast 300 Part A is very sensible for the humidity from the air, which can cause bubbling in the casting. I recommend you to clean the bottle before you close it, because then it will be much easier to open it next time. I give it a quick mix and then pure it into the mold and start the curing process, which is always interesting. This Smoothcast 300Q has a pot life of 30 seconds and a curing time of 5 minutes, so it's a really quick one. You also can see that the thinner material cures slower. I will show you why at the end of this video. After the part cool down a little bit, you can take it off from the mold and then we have finished with the sample. Tip number 16. Easier cleaning. As you could see before I left the mixing stick in the cup, because in this way it's much easier to clean it. So just squeeze a little bit and then you can pull out the whole cured urethane resin from your cup and reuse it next time. This trick also works with the silicone. Tip number 17. Use rubber bands. To seal back your cut in mold, you can put it back to your mold cup or it's an easier way I think to put some rubber bands on it, which helps to hold it closed during the casting process. Don't put too much of them because then it can squeeze the mold and then you will lose the original geometry. Tip number 18. It is hot. I measure the part E and part B amount and then mix them together. I had 30 seconds to make it and then immediately pure into the mold and I use my thermal camera to show you how does the temperature change with time. Again the magical curing process, you can see that it starts from the middle and then the temperature is rising above 100 degrees Celsius. So it's not really something that you want to touch or spill on your skin or your trousers. You can get serious burn injuries from it. This is clearly an exothermic chemical reaction which helps to set the urethane resin and that's why the sides of the resin cures later than the middle because there is a colder area. After the casting cooled down around 50 degrees Celsius we can take it off and then you can see how does it look in a thermal camera like the Predator. And here is the end result. It's not perfect but I'm happy with it and I learned a lot during this project. I hope you can use this knowledge and tips that I just showed you in your future projects and make it more successful. And now we have a much more durable part than the 3D printed one with the almost same surface quality. And my last tip is to subscribe to my channel. If you reach this point of the video I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new from it and if you want to see similar videos in the future from me then you can help with the subscription and give it a thumbs up, write some comments and see you next time.